thank you that our lawmakers are the highest, some of the highest any uh, government workers across the globe. So, guys, if you critically look at this chart here, you will see that the Nigerian lawmakers are the most paid in the entire world. This is heartbreaking in a country ravaged by Kwashoko. I mean, Nigeria is leading now in Kwashoko. We are not just the headquarter for poverty. Nigerian malnutrition is surging to 100% currently, and that is taking away the lives of children. We know that the NLC has suspended their strike. They said they are going to return to the discussion table, and they are hoping to reach an agreement soon with the federal government. But it is worrisome to see how these people do not really want to attack tend to the needs of nigerian workers when the nigerian lawmakers are the most paid in the entire world if they care tinubu will not be spending his time in naming abuja highway after wole Shoinka. this is to tell you that these people are just there for themselves they don't care at a time when the nigerian workers are crying that they, their salaries cannot even afford them a good livelihood Tinubu's minister for labor was asked about the lawmakers receiving the highest pay in the entire world. Take a look at her response. Thank you that our lawmakers are the highest, some of the highest earning uh, government workers across the globe. The they kind of money that goes into servicing uh, an arm of government that has less than about a thousand people. But, uh, Shehu, I can tell you for free that they have not been able to prove it. I was in parliament for 16 years. All the arguments of national assembly, wages and all that, none has been proven with fact. That, uh, that, that the that lawmakers are, are the, Yes. Yeah, they earn more than, in terms of allowances and, and, and salaries, they earn even more than a U.S. Uh, 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 a Congress member. That would be another discussion for... Yeah, yeah, because that's another, not, that's another not, that's not but, your own, uh, what's it called? But we've had this argument in the Senate, in the... And in you, the, remember, uh, when that argument came up, came up, the former Senate president had to call for a conference at International Conference Center, where our, the salaries of National Assembly was made uh, public. Remember? We have the good... We have the bad and we have the ugly. What is the good? Tax and other revenues have more than doubled. FAC increased to 14.39 trillion. Dangote refinery and other modular refineries have commenced operations. Forex backlog has been cleared. Credit rating upgraded to B. Outlook. Oil production increased to 1.34. And international fares have actually reduced. What is the bad? Nigeria used to be 32nd largest economy in the world. Today, we are now 42. In Africa, we're number one, but now we are down to number four. Inflation, which was at 24%, is now 33.69%. 33 Our public debt has risen to 97 trillion. What is the ugly? Terrorist attacks continue. Power grid collapses there. Exit of multinationals, Egypt, Procter, Procter & Gamble, escalating cost of living, and there's a crisis there. This is food inflation, and you can see it here. It's rising and driven by post-harvest losses, insecurity challenges, and poor storage. So this is, this is bad news. So how does it affect you? Here you are sitting down at home, and Ini and Jeffrey. One, at this time last year, you bought a bag of rice for 35,000. Today you are buying it at 80,000. It has increased by 129%. It actually got up to 95,000. Gary, very, very difficult. Gary was 28,000 a bag at this time last year, it is now 50,000. As a matter of fact, it crossed this and went back. Beans has become a major problem. Beans was 30,000 naira this time last year. It is now 95,000. It's gone up by 217%. You need beans for protein. A loaf of bread at this time last year was 900 naira. It's now 1,600. And a tuba of yam was 2,000 naira at this time last year. It is now 10,500. And guess what? The big problem is tomatoes. Yeah. Tomatoes was 40,000 a bag at this time last year. It is now 150,000. Yeah, but Mr. Rowan, we hear there's so many factors feeding to this, especially the tomatoes. There's the news of pests. Uh, it's a planting season. 
you know, and uh, so I, I mean, is it just the economy or the other things? No, I, think, I, I think you can. No, I think no, you no, can no, I'm saying, no, I'm, I'm not done. Mm -hmm. This is evidence-based analysis. Uh, this is a mm -hmm. fact. Uh, Mr. Mr. Rwanda, apparently we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, we're racing against time. <laughs> and we know you have a seat on the table. <laughs> well, so let, me, let me just... Yes, 30 one more seconds. Slide. 30 yes. seconds. Next slide, please. There's a non-food basket. This is... The, you did the food basket. Then the Transport for Lagos to Abuja. At this time last year, it cost you 20000 to go by night bus. Now it's 33000 It's up 68%. Or Balende to Woronshoki. It was 300 naira this time last year. It's now 500 up 67%. Lagos to Abuja was 38,000 last year at this time. It's now 80K, 111%. And Lagos to London, thank God, is now dropped drop from 2.6 million <laughs> to 1.4 uh, we'll million. We'll say thanks uh, to the airpiece for that. <laughs> thanks, sir. Right. And finally, finally, <laughs> so our ranking amongst African countries okay. has actually declined. In other words, we, we used to be, uh, our GDP growth was is 2.98 and South Africa is 1.93. Kenya has 4%. Ghana has 3.8%. Inflation, we are 33. South Africa is 5%. Kenya is 5%. Ghana is 25%. GDP per head, that is our wealth. Yeah. Now, every Nigerian is worth only $1,111. Guess what? South Africa, every South Africa is worth $6,700. Kenya, $2,000. And Ghana, $2,200. We never in the past. We're always richer than Ghana. Uh -huh. And now we are here. External reserves as percentage of GDP, the figures speak for themselves. So the picture is looking tough, but. Yeah, so many things, so many yeah, things yes, obviously yes, fit into this. Some, the question today that let's put some context into what we want to talk about. 365 days after, one year later, are you better off now than you were last year? And do you hope to be better off at this time next year? So that's the question we're asking ourselves. One year ago, there were promises, policies, and, announce, and announcements. The first promise uh, President Tunubu made was to increase GDP to $1 trillion in eight years. Before then, our GDP was almost $400 billion. So actually to double it in eight years. He removed petroleum subsidies. He unified exchange rates. He, he promised to overhaul the security infrastructure. You just heard that now. And he also promised to double the power generation, which was 5,000 megawatts then, to 10,000 megawatts in a period of five years, which means he, was, he promised to increase power by 1,250 megawatts every year. And he also promised to bring inflation under control. These were the promises, these were the announcements, and these were the policies. Next. So the highlights of these policies and announcements were that Major policy changes were announced in 2023, including the $1 trillion GDP goal. The time lag between policy announcements and efforts effect was a drag on outcomes. The unintended consequences are leading to social unrest. There's a cost of living crisis in Nigeria. The minimum wage negotiation will be a source of widespread conflict, and the wrong sequencing of reforms is taking its toll on output. Nigerians and Nigeria needs new borrowing to refinance existing obligations. And policy changes, institutional reform, and new borrowings will lead to positive and faster growth in the period 2025 to 2026. Next. Now, what are we seeing? The economic weakness is partly structural and mostly exogenous. So exogenous means from outside, but structural means fundamental. So what are the structural challenges? Rent-seeking market structure, energy crunch, 4,000 megawatts, regulatory bottlenecks, declining labor productivity, and demographic pressures, including urbanization. Exogenous shocks, COVID disruption after COVID, global supply chain disruption, political tension, high global interest rates, transitory developments, cost of living crisis, wage, of, wage agitation, and social unrest. Next, please. Now, what really happened? This is very important. What happened in the last one year? Before, we we're growing at 2.91%. That was last year. After, we are now growing at 2.87. So our growth has actually declined by 0 .4, 0 0.04. Headline inflation was 22.41 last year when Bola Tunubu took, took office. It is now 33.69. 
So it has deteriorated by 11.28%. And this very food inflation was 24.82. It is now 40.53. It has deteriorated by 15.71%. The exchange rate on May 29 last year was 765 in the parallel market, 765 naira to a dollar. Today it's at 1,520. It has lost essentially. It has more or less do doubled and it's gone down by 100%. Difference between parallel and official market, official rate. The difference in May 29 last year between the parallel market and the official rate was 295 naira to a dollar. Today, because the official rate has been adjusted in the last two days, it is now. The, the, the difference is now 346 Naira. So it has actually deteriorated. The price of diesel at this time last year was 840 Naira a liter. Today it's 1,200. Don't forget this diesel price had gone all the way to 1,700. But thanks to Dangote, they brought it down to 1,200 and it's off by 43%. Petrol at the pump, PMS, was selling at 190 highly subsidized. Today it's 580 in some, most parts of the country, 617 Naira. So it, the price of petrol has actually uh, increased by 205%. But generally speaking, efforts were commendable, but outcome was average. Now let's go to oil production. We are producing 1.15 million barrels of oil a day. Last year this time, we are now producing 1.2 rates, which is a marginal increase of about 11%. Federal Allocation Committee was sharing 10.2, the total FAC last year was 10.92 trillion. Guess what? Because subsidy removal and uh, reduction, we now are sharing 14.39 trillion. So revenue accrued and revenue shared has increased by 31.78%. The deficit as a percentage of GDP was 4.21% of GDP and now it's gone to 5.50% of GDP. One, because GDP has reduced, but revenue has increased, but it's a negative variable. Real positive interest rates, it was minus 4.55, and at this time last year, it is now minus 7.21, so it has deteriorated by 2.66%. Total external debt was $42.7 billion. Today, it is $42.5 billion, so it has improved a little bit. External debt per head, every Nigerian was owing $179 last year, they are now owing only $178 per head. The gross external reserves was $35 billion last year, it has dropped by 7% to $32 billion. The minimum wage as of last year was 30,000 Naira per head, per man, per month, and now it's, uh, it's, it's open to a bargain. Next slide. So, economic impact and unintended consequences. This is the big picture. The gross fixed investment which drives growth was $154 billion last year. It is now down to $105 billion, down by 31%. The stock market capitalization, positive. It was 30 trillion Naira at this time last year. Now it is up to 55 trillion Naira, up by 83%. So, uh, stock market investors are making money. National savings as a percentage of GDP was 33% by this time last year, is down to 29%. Life expectancy at this time last year was 55.8. It has improved by about three months to 56.1. Ships awaiting birth at the ports in Nigeria were 12 at this time last year. They are now up to 15, so it has improved by 25%. And grid collapses were 12 times last year, that means the grid collapsed every, once every month, but this time it has collapsed only five times. So. so guys, it is becoming clear that Nigeria has made the biggest mistake, you know? You can see it, it is very clear. These people do not care. They don't even want to know if the ordinary man finds food to, to eat before going to bed. It is none of their problem. And Nigerians are blaming the NLC for being so weak in negotiating with the federal government. They are not supposed to have called off this strike. And Nigerians are wondering why they decided to call off the strike, even when they know they've not reached any agreement. And as you can see, people like Aisha Yusufu, them, they are lending their voices, you know, condemning uh, the Nigerian Labour Congress for not achieving anything. And they quickly ran to 
call off the strike in the name of they are returning to the discussion table so guys nigeria is finished at the moment let me know what you think about this in the comment section below please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell thank you